Welcome back guys to another Odyssey video. A lot of you probably remember the absolute crazy level 22 builds. But for many the level 22 builds actually took way too long and were way too complicated to make early in the game. So I will just squeeze in a new level 10 build which is way easier and much simpler to make and doesn't require you to collect all the crit chance stuff. So in this video I will show you an absolute crazy level 10 build that is able to overrun every mercenary as early as on level 10 with just a normal assassination with a single arrow or with just a single strike of your sword. And the best of it, this build can be made after playing the game for only 3 hours. That means you only have to complete Cephalonia and reach a Mega Reese to speak to Stentor. You don't have to progress any further in the story, you don't have to leave any of the starting areas. You will have everything you need right at the start and you will be overpowered right from the beginning of the game. This is nightmare on easy mode unlocked right at the start. All the damage in this game is scaled exponentially, so what is now 5000 damage on level 10 will become 50,000 damage on level 20. What is now 15,000 on level 10 will become 150,000 on level 20. So all your attacks will become significantly stronger just 10 levels later, but even on level 10 you already deal so much damage that you will one shot everyone easily even on nightmare. And that of course includes every normal enemy, every mercenary, every leader and even every polo mark which you can just simply one shot on level 10. The only reason why I'm not able to hit 100,000 damage on level 10 is because the fury of the bloodline and overpower attacks, the highest damage dealing attacks are still locked until you reach level 16. So once you reach a higher level you will be totally obliterating this game. This is the perfect pre-build before you start to transition your character into the more powerful level 22 builds. Of course there are still a few things you have to do during your first 3 hours of playing the game to make this build. The first one is to help Odessa while you are still playing Cephalonia. Odessa can be found on the small island next to Cephalonia, she is locked up in a cage, you have to free her and escort her to the beach. You should ideally do this when you also collect the shroud for Elpinor. Make sure to be nice to her because you will need her later when you reach Mega Reese. Speaking of Mega Reese, once you reach Mega Reese, you have to speak to Stentor. And after completing the Stentor conversation, you will immediately unlock Corfu Island. That is a purple quest marker on Cephalonia. Fast travel back to the dock, speak to the woman, ignore the warnings and then simply collect your clothes when you are on Corfu Island. Report back to Barnabas and that will allow you to free roam the whole island. You don't have to worry about any spoilers because we won't do the story of this island anyway. We just want to collect two specific Ostracas. The first one is located on this location and it is best to actually collect it from the water side to avoid fighting the soldiers. The solution for that can be found in Alienos village inside of this pot. The second one is all the way up to the north, you have to go to Kolaidi farm to collect the riddle and the solution for that can be found at the northeast at the docks. These two ostracas are the most important engravings for our build. The first one unlocks 100% all damage but minus 100% resistances which is actually giving you 200% to all your base damage types so it basically triples your existing damage. And the second one increases your headshot damage by another 100% and since headshot damage doesn't need any crit chance it is a guaranteed 100% damage multiplier whenever you make a headshot. This one is doubling again all your range damage. After collecting these two ostracas don't do any further quest on Corfu Island. Use your atlas menu, fast travel back to Greece and do the tomb of Alcatus in Mega Reese. That's an easy early ability point you can collect and there's also a very valuable sword located in this tomb which is called the Headhook. We will use the Headhook for this build until we get the better swords, the Hater's Harper and Sword of Axon in the Athens area. Don't forget to do the family ordeal quest which is again unlocked by Odessa after you helped her in Cephalonia. Odessa will give us a very powerful bow for early game which has hunter damage and headshot damage. Definitely use this bow before you reach level 15. At level 15 you can use the Bicorn bow but not before. The Bicorn bow does only work at level 15 and above. And if you ever need any leather to upgrade your armor items for this build, you can simply go to the forts and loot the supply crates or nation chest. You will get up to 20 or 30 leather for each supply crate and over 1000 drachme for each nation chest as early as level 10. And if you still need more, there are also 5 early accessible blacksmiths which always sell over 100 leather each. You can simply go to every blacksmith, buy all the leather and then you should definitely have enough to upgrade all the gear and make this build as powerful as it can be. 
And at those blacksmiths of course you can also sell all the old and outdated gear which you don't need. But now let's finally check out the build guys. As you can see we have 1800 hunter damage, 1300 warrior damage and 14000 assassin damage. These values seem to be very low but you have to keep in mind we are only at level 10 or 11 here with this build. With a random casual build you would be only around the low hundreds like 200-300 damage. But with this build we are comfortably hitting thousands of damage already. This build will also use mixed legendary items from the Ezio set and the Northern Traveler set because we cannot use any of the two set bonuses anyway. It is way too early to make use of that and that allows us to pick the best item with the best stats for each spot. We also don't use the Beacon Bow because we don't have any left weapon equipped. And without a left weapon the Beacon Bow is basically useless. It doesn't do anything for you. Your left melee weapon slot is unlocked at level 15. So at any level before level 15 you can simply use another bow. But as soon as you reach level 15 equip a perfect epic melee weapon such as Hater Sabre, use the Beacon Bow and that is your perfect setup from then on. A really good early sword which you can loot before you reach Athens is the Headhook. The Headhook can be found in the Tomb of Alcatus in Mega Reese. It has assassin damage, warrior damage and critical damage. And if you want to you can optionally engrave the plus 100% damage but health kept to 25%. But if you don't want to get that you can also simply engrave damage swords if you have already unlocked it. Getting this additional 100% damage engraving would require you to travel with your ship to the southeastern part of the map. There's a diving location where you can loot a weapon that is unlocking this engraving. But as I said, this is a bit out of place for this build, it is a different area of the map and it is only optional. For the bow you should use Odessa's bow as long as you are below level 15. Odessa's bow has hunter damage and hatchet damage and here you can engrave another plus 15% all damage. This engraving can be unlocked from a helix door weapon called the Greek Hello. However it doesn't really give you that much damage. So you can also rather engrave crit chance if you don't want to get it. Odessa's bow can be unlocked if you complete the whole family ordeal quest in Mega Reese. To unlock this quest line you have to help her in Kefalonia as well, otherwise the quest won't appear. It is very important that you won't play with these weapons forever. At around level 20 you should definitely equip the Beacon Bow, use Hater Sarper and the Sword of Axon. The level 22 builds show you exactly how to get these new better weapons and also how to unlock much more powerful new engravings. For the headgear we will pick Aesius Roman Hood, because Aesius Roman Hood is the only hood that has damage swords which is unlocked for free at the start of the game. It has also assassin damage and here we should engrave another 5% headshot damage that will further boost your range damage. However when you reach level 20 you should definitely engrave 10% crit chance at full health here. For the bracers we will also use Aesius bracers with assassin damage, crit chance and we also engrave another warrior damage here. These bracers come with a pre-engraved crit chance so we can happily enjoy the 2% instead of having only 1%. For the belt we will use the Northern Traveler's Waste which has warrior damage and then a fixed 5% all damage which actually never changes and another pre-engraved 2% crit chance. So that is a really good belt but be careful because these 5% all damage will never change so it is only good during early game and pretty much a waste later in the game. Here we will engrave the plus 100% damage but minus 100% resistance resistances which we collected from Corfu Island. For the torso again we use one of Ezio's set pieces with assassin damage, 10% critical damage and here we also engrave another 2% warrior damage that is the best we can actually do at this point. And for the boots we also use the Northern Traveler's boots with warrior damage, another fixed 5% all damage engraving and here we engrave a new 100% headshot damage engraving which basically works as 100% critical damage without having to use any crit chance because it is always applied when you make a headshot. This can also be collected from Corfu Island as shown in the beginning. So with this build at level 10 we are already able to reach 381% warrior damage, 390% assassin damage and 362% hunter damage. And even more important we have 235% headshot damage which is similar working as critical damage and absolutely beating our critical damage which is only 95% at 40% chance but we have 235% headshot damage at 100% chance. That is what makes range attacks so powerful during early game because they deal way more damage and they don't need any crit chance. So the earlier you are in this game the more you should use your bow before your warrior damage will take over with a reasonable crit chance with a reasonable damage. 
Let's not forget the ability points, because without your abilities you will be much much weaker. So this is exactly the best way to spend your first 10 ability points to create a perfect build for early game. We can mostly only use the level 1 or level 2 abilities and a lot of them are still unlocked. We go for 6th sense, at level 1 this ability will slow down time for 5 seconds that allows you to better aim, charge your bow and even allows you to overrun mercenaries in a frontal assassination will always have 5 seconds before you are detected even if you stand directly in front of your enemies. The best hunter ability for early game is a devastating shot, it deals 290% hunter damage so it basically triples your hunter damage at level 2. Then archery master of course is used to refill your first adrenaline segment. Without archery master you will have a really hard time especially when you use the 100% headshot and increased adrenaline consumption. Because archery master will refill all those half filled adrenaline bars which are created by that engraving. In the warrior tree we will go for a second wind for the healing. This is only at level 1 so it is not that strong. If you want to you can also use the torch glitch to heal yourself. That is explained in the working glitches video on top of the channel. Also go for weapons master which gives you additional warrior damage and 5% crit chance which is very valuable early game. Then I would definitely recommend to go for the charged heavy attacks because this is your strongest melee attack early game. And then don't forget to go for Shadow Assassin for increased assassin damage, increased critical damage and of course one of the most important abilities early game Rush Assassination. With that ability you will be able to kill everyone. Rush Assassination and Devastating Shot are the strongest abilities and the most important combo during early game. However there are still a lot of abilities locked especially overpower attacks and fear of the bloodline. If you reach level 16 you should definitely grab up these two abilities. They are the strongest abilities in the game with up to 18 times and 9 times multiplier for your damage. With these abilities you will be able to one shot every mercenary up to level 50. I hope you really enjoy this build, please don't forget to subscribe, leave me a like and see you next time.